Now the team representing Australia at the International Mathematical Olympiad is back on home soil and it was an incredibly successful trip to Cape Town. The star of the team is 17-year-old Year 12 student Alex Gunning. He tied for first in the world and achieved Australia's first ever perfect score. Alex is with us now and in Sydney is broadcaster and maths lover Adam Spencer who's also been involved in the tournament. Adam, good morning to you. Good morning. And uh, I think more importantly, you won't mind me saying this Adam, uh, Alex, good morning to you and congratulations. Uh, morning. It looks great to have you here. Did you have fun? Did you enjoy the tournament? Oh, yes, I did, of course. It, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was nice meeting all the other students who had, you know, similar interests to me. And did, you, did you know that you were doing really well? At what point did you think this is going awfully well? Uh, well, I didn't, actually, I didn't actually know. Well, basically, after I solved the last question, since you can never, never guarantee solving any of these questions, then it's that yeah. hard. But you got, a, you got a sense that things were going awfully well. Yeah. Good. <laughs> were, were there any questions that really put you on the spot, stumped you, that you weren't expecting? Uh, well, not really, I suppose. They'll... Because you're so good, of course. But there, there's, obviously there's, 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 there are going to be questions that are going to hang you up for a while. There's, yeah. Yeah. there's few enough that... They might just slow you down, yeah. I guess. A a Adam, how does this work? This sounds like, I have to say, my nightmare, my living nightmare, <laughs> waking up in, in a big room full of people all sitting at desks being asked to do a series of maths exams as the day goes on. I, I think I might run screaming from that room. Well, the first thing, Virginia, if you heard you only had to do three questions and you had four and a half hours, you might think, well, that's not too bad. But think about this. These kids do two exams they're each four and a half hours long and they contain only three questions each. So imagine how complicated those questions must be that you need 90 minutes each to answer them and the most common score on a lot of these questions is zero or one out of seven. They're just sort of grabbing at <laughs> shadows trying to find something. <laughs> Alex has sat six questions and got seven out of seven for each of them. It's a once-in-a-generation achievement, it really is. That is, that is just amazing. And look, uh, Alex, this is going to be, I'm sure, a hard question to answer, but when I look at those sorts of maths problems yeah. as I did at high school, and it just doesn't make sense to me, when you look at a problem, is it, is it, is it just clear? Are you, are you understanding things that I just don't see? Uh, I, it, well, the first thing to do is, well, I can understand the problem pretty easily. Yeah. But you have to look at the problem for quite a while before you actually have su some idea of what you're, what you're supposed to do. Yes. Um, that's a lot of, well, probably quite a lot of what distinguishes students who do Olympiads from students who stay at, do stay at school. They, are, you know, they, get, they get used to persevering at a problem until it falls out. Right. Are, are there different ways of getting to the perfect answer? Uh, well, of course there are. I mean, <laughs> honestly, Michael, oh, no, well, don't I, you know uh, that? Uh, you're talking. No, I mean, you're talking to another maths dunce here. I've got no <laughs> yeah, idea I'm, either. I'm, I'm just saying that that's, that's part of what makes the competition competition so interesting. That you've right. got so many different uh, ways of approaching the solution, and you don't know which of them work and which of them don't work. But it's quite often the case that several of them do work. Oh, I was going to answer. So, so there's not only just one way of solving the problem. There might be a number of ways. Yeah, there might be a number yeah. of ways. But what but I remember from my math studies is that you have to show that. What your mm. answer is this long series of how you actually show how you work that problem out. And, and every step in the chain has to be correct. Uh, well, oh, you're allowed to skip a few things as long as it's pretty clear what you're doing. OK. As, uh, but your method has to be correct and it has to work for you to get all the marks. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite an uh, achievement. Uh, Adam, I guess we're talking about, uh, it is the Olympiad, elite athletes of a different yeah. nature here. That's the thing. Someone like Alex has tremendous natural ability, but he has worked outside of his normal schoolwork hundreds of hours of competition, of practice, of doing different problems. And a lot of it is just equipping yourself with something that in the back of your mind, when you see one of these problems, you go, I've seen something like this before. And the memory recall comes in and then you yep. stumble upon the answer. And the interesting thing that Alex was alluding to, sometimes with these questions, you might be able to say, OK, here's my answer. There's 37 different examples I've got to consider. I'll just go through and consider every one of them. You sort of punch the question to death, chunk by <laughs> chunk. But within that, there's probably a beautiful, elegant, eight-line answer mm. that sits above that brute force method. And the genius of people like Alex is they can often find in half a page an answer that's more compelling than someone who might go for six or eight pages just writing and writing. There's this elegant simplicity sometimes to the most beautiful answers. But Alex has put in hundreds of hours of practice to get to this world's best 
perfect score position he's in. Uh, Alex, um, uh, every parent watching this morning is now pointing at you and saying to their kids over the breakfast table, <laughs> you see, you see what you've got to do? You've got to do hundreds of these hours of practice. You just ruined all these kids' lives. This <laughs> Alex, um, beyond doing these sorts of uh, amazing international tournaments, what does someone with such great math skill, what do you go on to do? What would you like to go on to do with the rest of your life, do you think? Uh, well, I want to, I'm not really certain so far, but I'll probably, probably do something... I might go into pure math or applied math or something yes. like that. So. And there's great research that you can do when yeah, you've got that sort yeah, of skill. And yeah. um, I also wanted to ask you, elite athletes we were alluding to mm. before, they know each other and they also know who's their real rival. Mm. In the maths field, do you know who is the other person when you go into these competitions who you really want to beat? Well, uh, I went to this competition last year and I, I, I know who beat me last year. Yeah. Uh, I, I, knew who, I knew who was coming back and who could potentially be a threat, but... Yeah. It, it turned out that none of the people who I thought were a threat actually got a perfect score this year. So it, you can't really tell these things. So you had new threats. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no worries. You're, you are the Usain Bolt yeah, that's of right. international right. mathematics. And Adam, uh, of course, you dabbled in more than a bit of maths in your university <laughs> days. Do you think you could teach this young up-and-comer anything at all? No, no, I've said it before. Look, Michael, my mathematical ability in a room full of randomly selected people I'm a maths genius. In a room full of Alex Gunnings, I'm as dumb as a sack full of hammers. This guy <laughs> is, as they say, the real deal and yep. operates on a level of acuity that only a handful of people in the world do and we should be extremely proud of what yep. he's done. We, we are and, and thrilled to meet him. No, um, Adam, you don't come anywhere near the dumb as a box of hair you, you got <laughs> sitting here on the desk this morning. Adam, a, a, real, a real pleasure to talk to you and Alex, seriously, congratulations. Yeah, well, well done. done and it's so nice to hear that you enjoy it so much as well. That's great. All Fantastic. the best. How far did you get in your maths at school? I got to teaching it at mathematics in my HSC year. And oh, I... you, you did it in HSC? And I failed. <laughs> Got about 20% or 30%. I bailed at the end of year 10. Did you? Oh, really? Yeah. I was doing, you know, what we used to... I won't say what we used to call that no, mathematics, but no. <laughs> you know what I was going to say, but I won't say. I endured you know it. It was, was torture. Well. <laughs> it was torture. And, uh, yeah, what's well, six times now. <laughs> Would you, what? Go on. Seven pint. Well, I'm moving on. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out here. Alex knows. It's 54. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Alex, just stay here for a little while. You just, just take care of me.